Wake Forest back in the NCAA field after a three-year absence. The Deacons' last appearance was in 2005 when as a number two regional seed they beat Chattanooga in the opener. Later lost to seventh-seeded West Virginia. Can they get past Cleveland State, the man that can best answer that question, Gary Parrish. He joins us now. Gary, when you look at Wake, this is a team that needs to remember their role. Wake is young. Sometimes youth shows up. Will that be a factor? It could be. I mean, this is a team that, uh, you know, they played well down the stretch, but the schedule wasn't that, uh, that demanding down the stretch. And, of course, they lose to Maryland in the first game of the ACC tournament. They, they look, they, they got a lot of experience. But at this point, you know, these guys have played 30 games. They, they, you know, that should be off the table. Um, still, um, I love the talent, but you do, uh, let's be honest, have a second-year coach and a bunch of freshmen and sophomores, and, uh, yeah, that can sometimes be a tough combination in this event. There, there's no denying that. Okay, it's all about offensive skills. Like you said, you like the talent. Jeff Teague averages around 19 points a game, fourth highest in the league. Who else will they turn to? What kind of numbers will, will a James Johnson going to put up for you in this kind of game? Well, they need their stars to be stars. And one of the reasons I like this team, and honestly, I picked it to go to the Final Four and, and beat Louisville on its way, I like um, pro players. I mean, it, it, we spend a lot of time talking about, you know, uh, uh, stats and numbers and winning streaks and, and uh, good college players and great coaches. At the end of the day, this is a player's game. And, and if you look um, throughout history, if you're going to go far in this tournament, you can, yeah, I mean, we're going to get a George Mason every once in a while, but by and large, the teams with the best players get there. And I don't mean just best college players, the best NBA prospects. There's a reason Kansas and Memphis played for the national title last year. Uh, Kansas had about five or six pros. Memphis had about three or four. Um, Wake Forest has pros. Jeff Teague is a future NBA player. James Johnson is a future NBA player. Al Farouk Aminu, a future NBA player. And that's a pretty good trio of talented guys two of them up front, and at one point this year, Teague looked like one of the best guards in the country, if not the best. He tailed off a little bit at the end, but he's still got an explosive first step. He's capable of getting going at any time, and if he can play in this event the way he played early when they knocked off uh, North Carolina and they went and won at Clemson, then this is a team that can go very, very far. But for the Vikings, it's in the stats. Listen to this, Gary. The Vikings are a perfect 23-0 and when shooting a higher field goal percentage than their opponents, just 2-10 and when their opponent shoots better than, from the field than them. they got to shoot. they got to shoot well. Yeah, and the problem is Wake Forest is a pretty good defensive team. I mean, uh, one of the things that, uh, you know, uh, Dino Gaudio would always talk about this year, you know, even when Teague was going bananas, was look, the key to all this is our defense. People have a hard time scoring against us, so... Uh, from that perspective, this is not a, a great matchup for Cleveland State. For another reason, uh, Cleveland State's top scores are 6'5", 6'1", 6'3", 6'4". They are not big. It, it, it's typical of a, of a Heisman League type team. I mean, it's easy to recruit 6'1", 6'2", guards. They're all over the place. A little bit harder to go find 6'9", athletes. But Wake Forest does have those guys. James Johnson, 6'9", Alfred Rizomino, 6'9", Chase McFarland, 7 foot. Um, there's a side problem for Cleveland State in this game. So... Uh, I'm with you. They they need to make shots, and uh, you know they when they beat Butler uh, in the Horizon title game, they hit ten three pointers. Uh, that might be the way to go this way too. If they hit ten three pointers, they could stay stay around. Otherwise, it's going to be tough on them. If they can shoot well, basically you're saying if they can put together a complete game, they can play defense too. The Vikes have held 11 opponents to 50 or fewer points this season, a school record. But does that school record, Gary, hold hold worth against a Teague, a Johnson? I don't think so. But um, let, let, let's be clear, this is a team that beat Syracuse this year. We see how good Syracuse is uh, from this past week. They also beat Butler, obviously. Um, you know, look, they, they played West Virginia to a 10-point game. Um, you know, they, they played Kansas State to a 10-point game. So there, there's nothing that says, suggests that they can't be competitive, that they can't hang around, and if they can get a, you know, a buzzer beater um, from half court like they did at the Carrier Dome, then maybe. But... Um, again, I think there's a size differential, there's a talent differential, I and mean, it's to be expected from any Horizon League team um, and the uh, ACC team. The one thing that I think makes Butler different or more dangerous in this perspective coming out of the Heiser, uh, Horizon League is because Butler is a team that's going to spread it out, run its stuff, and take, and take jumpers, and if they start hitting three-pointers, then they can really uh, cause a lot of problems from pretty much anybody. Cleveland State is more of a... You know, traditional basketball team. They don't have some sort of system that's going to necessarily uh, frustrate a team like Wake Forest. And I suspect that uh, it, it, this is the type of game where the team with the bigger, stronger, more athletic, and honestly more talented players 
we'll, we'll probably be okay in the end. We'll see how it all works out. Wake Forest, Cleveland State, 9.40 p.m. Eastern on March 20th. Watch every game from the first round to the NCAA championship live online for free with NCAA March Madness On Demand. Go to NCAA.com to find out more. For Gary Parish, I'm Lauren Shahadi. We'll see you soon.